off. As we gather this Sunday, let us rest our minds and give to God all our hopes, concerns, and thanksgiving as we prepare to receive Jesus into our hearts and into our lives. Today's Mass is being offered to James Hutchinson. Please stand and greet our presider, Father Michael Corpus. Please join in singing our opening hymn found on page 398. We know that Christ is raised, page 398. That Christ is raised and died no more. Embraced by death that broke its fearful hold. On our despair he turned to blazing joy. Alleluia. We share by water in his saving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Greetings and thank you again for the warm welcome. My name once more is Father Michael Corpus. I am the Vice Rector at St. Augustine Seminary, kind of like the Vice Principal of a school where, again, your seminarian, uh, Brother Matthew, again, Matthew comes from the seminary, and I'm kind of here to do an inspection, so I hope to hear some good things after Mass. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me, have mercy and hear me. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favor to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for, for ours only, but also for the sin of the whole world. 
Now, by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obey his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord Jesus, make your word plain to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when they had said, he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. As I was reflecting on our scriptures today, I have to say, a thought came to mind of all these times in my younger life when I had been a little bit obsessed and a little bit crazy with this notion of fitness and exercise. And when I was younger, especially much, much younger, I loved to play sports, all different types. I also liked to go to the gym or to lift weights at home. Um, and I was a little bit obsessed, a little bit crazy. And I know that I'm not alone in this thought. In fact, there is a surge in demand for fitness-related products and ser services uh, in Canada, and this industry has expanded. Again, this industry of gyms and fitness centers, personal training services, athletic apparel and equipment retailers, nutrition and supplements businesses, and wellness retreats. These things are growing in Canada, and it is said that just for the gyms, health, and fitness clubs, it is said that this industry last year had a revenue of 4. 7 billion dollars last year and it faced a growth of about 15 
0.5% year over year. So there is an obsession, I think, or maybe a craze out there. Now, I'm not necessarily part of it. In fact, for most of my life, although I've been aiming for a six pack, I just had a one, one big pack. <laughs> Still the case. From a Christian perspective, on the upside of things, again, the positive side of this kind of craze is that there have always been, there is a goodness in trying to maintain good health, good body health. Being health conscious is good when it is focused on wanting to be able to serve God and to serve neighbor with a longer, healthy life. Also, there's this good in maintaining a healthy body because in order to have a good spiritual life, one might, have, one might need a, a, a healthy body. In fact, for instance, just thinking about this, um, uh, if one doesn't sleep or maybe eat well, your mood and emotions can be thrown off uh, and then it makes it difficult to pray. So, you know, sometimes when people ask me for advice, you know, the, the simplest advice that I can give them is sleep, sleep, or eat well, or even work out. Again, the body is important also in the spiritual life. But from the same Christian perspective, I have to say there is a downside, there is a negative side to, to all this craze of fitness. Again, the media influences the way that we perceive beauty and also uh, these health or body standards. Again, it can be very unhealthy. These standards are impossible considering all the normal obligations that you might have as a regular person living in the world. Again, you're not a celebrity that could spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week at perfecting their body just to have a role on a TV show or a movie. But again, these are the standards that we see in, in those things, TV shows, movies, also in advertising and also in social media. There is this image perfection that we are all a little bit obsessed about. And if not, this is the culture that we live in, even if you're not obsessed about it. On this third Sunday of e the Easter seasons, we are presented with another resurrection account. These accounts are central to the Christian believer, and just to go over it, I mean, we say it all the time, Jesus, Jesus was crucified, died, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and then he appeared in several ways to his disciples and to other people in body and soul. So first, the first appearance was very obvious. It was a while back that we read this at Easter. Mary Magdalene and the other women at the tomb, they were presented by angels who said that he had risen and was gone. All we saw in the empty tomb were the cloths that were left behind by Jesus, that he had been wrapped in. Again, the gardener appeared to Mary. He seemed disguised in some way. And he basically said, Mary. And at that, Mary said, Rabuni. Again, identifying it was Jesus who had appeared to her in the flesh. The second instance is this appearance of the two disciples that were on their way to Emmaus. Although they initially had uh, not recognized him, he walked, Jesus walked and talked with them, explaining the scriptures and eventually revealing himself when they broke bread together. But Jesus vanished. And so those two disciples, they decided to go back to Jerusalem, another roughly eight miles, back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. And this is where we found ourselves last Sunday and this Sunday. Again, this is that encounter of the disciples in the upper room as Jesus appears. He passes through stone walls and locked wooden doors in order to appear to his disciples. Again, it's a sudden thing, and they're surprised. He says, peace be with you, as we heard. The disciples are initially terrified and thinking they're seeing a ghost. And Jesus, reassuring them, he shows them his hands and his feet, his side, inviting them to touch his side. We hear, heard of this account last week um, that was explained in the Gospel of John, but now we are looking at it at the perspective of Luke. And there's a little bit of a difference Jesus says the same, peace be with you in this account. But what is different? Jesus asks his disciple, his disciples, have you anything here to eat? Such a good question. Huh? I'm a little bit hungry today too, I'm sure. I'm sure you are waiting for dinner. But have you anything here to eat? Jesus is given broiled fish to demonstrate that he is not just a spirit, so he eats as he has appeared before them. Why did he eat? Well, I kind of gave it away. 
There is something special about Jesus and his body. At the transfiguration, we were given a glimpse of the glory of God. Again, Jesus' face shone like it was, it was brilliant, and same with his clothes. Uh, some depictions have him floating in the air. But now at the resurrection, Jesus has a glorified body. It allows him to pass through linen cloths, to appear eight miles away from his tomb to these, these disciples on the road to Emmaus, and then back again on the same day, that evening, back in the upper room with his disciples, eight miles back. It allows him to move in a special way. And here, just to demonstrate that he's just not a spirit, he has a body, a tangible body, yet different. He asks them, though, have you anything here to eat? Was he famished? Our tradition teaches no. He wasn't hungry, even though you might think after the crucifixion and all that commotion, going back and forth to Emmaus and back and all that stuff, he wasn't hungry. But yet he asks a question which causes a ponderance and need to be expressed and an action comes back to him giving him something to eat. He didn't need to eat, but rather he wanted to reassure them of his physical reality. By eating food in the presence of the disciples, Jesus was providing tangible evidence that he had a physical resurrection. He wanted to demonstrate that he was not just a spirit or a mere apparition, not a ghost. He had truly risen body, had a risen body from the dead. And although he ate, again, this can be a symbol of many other things, such as, and I should just say, a fulfillment of the scriptures, but also his eating is also a symbol of communion and fellowship, which is what we will do today in the Eucharist. But just to highlight Jesus' glorified body, it has these amazing qualities. Firstly, it has physicality like your body and my body. It can be touched. It has feeling, right? So there are senses. The second part is that it has transcendence of the physical. It can move through things. This is different, obviously, from ours. And it can move distances. Also, Jesus' resurrected or glorified body has transformation. How was he not known by Mary Magdalene and the disciples on the road who, whom he had spent years with? How is that? He appears different. So perhaps transformation. We see that also in the transfiguration. Immortality and incorruptibility, again, he cannot die again, and his body will not decay. And he also has the ability now to ascend into heaven. He is still human, and yet he intercedes and he mediates for us. This is an amazing thing. And I have to say, Jesus' body that he had after the resurrection is something that he's offering to you. Not just his own body, but your body. He's giving the offer of a glorified body for you, a perfect body. Now you're probably thinking that six pack again, but no, that's not it. It's all these other characteristics that I'm, I'm talking about. A glorified body is available to you. And so why, I ask, you know, as I'm reflecting, why are we, or maybe me and the rest of culture, sometimes so obsessed with our physical bodies? Yet there is a goodness why aren't we more obsessed with getting a glorified body? A glorified body is one that is perfect. And in order to obtain that, it really is the resurrection and it really is heaven. So why are we not obsessed with this rather than an obsession with physical looks and fitness? Well, I have to say, you, I'm just going to leave you with this very simple thought. How do we get it? A glorified body. Well, we can continue our Lenten practices. Those are still definitely good, increased prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Also, from our first reading and second reading, we can follow the commandments so our sins may be wiped, also wiped away when we repent. But I just want to sum it up in this one kind of phrase, and this is taken from a Latin motto that uh, the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, has taken up. In Latin, it reads, Ad Maiorum de Gloriam. Ad maiorum de gloriam. And this is the, the Latin motto that maybe we can think about when we go through life. Rather than obsessing and thinking of the, the physical body and the perfection of it, and rather than just the glorified body, which may be abstract, when you start to get tempted, think of this phrase, 
ad maiorum de gloria. I'll translate in a second. And when you try to do good, do it for this too. It translates to this, for the greater glory of God. In everything that we do, if we could just have that simple thought, for the greater glory of God, this will be a simple path towards the glorified body waiting for you. So I pray for you as we journey together. Again, this is really the goal. Think of this and keep this, keep this in your minds and in your soul rather than thinking of the physical obsessions. Think of the spiritual ones. A glorified body for you is waiting in heaven. May God bless you. Let us now bring our needs and our prayers and our petitions to the, our Lord who hears our cry and knows what we need. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for His Grace Archbishop Francis Leo, and for all bishops and clergy, that they may shepherd us with wisdom, love, and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the Ukraine, the Middle East, and in all other countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people everywhere will use God's gifts of soil and water according to God's plan for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will recognize the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread and wherever he reveals his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sake of our parish, especially Epiphania Lee, Bob Loiko, Gay Compton, Ignatius Aylward, and all who care for them, especially family members, and all in the medical profession. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Father Martin Chambers, Robert Sullivan, that they may be received into everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's Mass is offered for James Hutchinson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Professing what we believe, let us raise our voices using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And see the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our Lord, and life everlasting. Almighty God, you give us so many great things. We lift our prayers and petitions to you for those are in your heart, those that are in our heart are now in yours, and we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn found on page 403. Now the green blade rises, page 403. Love lives again, that in 
that it has been. Love is come again, like wheat arising green. And in the grave they laid him, love by hatred slain, thinking that he Unseen. Love is come again like wheat arising green. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, as you have given her cause for such gr great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your, your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered through, throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you'll bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power of the glory of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you embrace you, and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn found on page 405. Sing of the one who walks beside us. Page 405.
Oh, good evening, everyone. I want to uh, begin by uh, thanking Father Michael Corpus for, for I think this is your first uh, time celebrating here. Father Michael is from the seminary, the vice rector, and, and uh, you can tell that Tulio is a little bit more tense today. <laughs> And uh, he should be. <laughs> I have some good news. Uh, firstly, uh, concerning Jeremy, our former intern. Uh, Father Jeremy, Father almost, he's deacon now, but he's going to be ordained uh, to the priesthood uh, on Mother's Day weekend, uh, May 11th. And um, he'll have his first Mass here uh, two weeks later because uh, he'll have his first Mass at his home parish the first weekend that he's ordained, and then he's on retreat. Um, but just to, uh, as you know, we have to read a formal statement uh, of that, and so it's a statement about call, being called to order. So this is the statement. Uh, Reverend Mr. Jeremy Ling Hong Zhao is to be ordained to the Sacred Order of Presbyter for the Archdiocese of Toronto on May 11th, 2024 at St. Michael's Cathedral Basilica in Toronto. Uh, canon law obliges Catholics to reveal any impediment uh, to sacred orders to the bishop or pastor. So kindly keep uh, Jeremy in your prayers as he prepares for his ordination. You probably remember Daniel. He spent some time here in the summer. He's been ordained the same day also. And secondly, um, Archbishop uh, Francis Leo is a has appointed uh, Father Andrew Taylor as associate pastor uh, here for St. Edward's Parish, effective uh, July 1st. Father Taylor Andrew was ordained only a few years ago, 2021. He spent his first year at the cathedral uh, as an associate there. And in the past two years, he served in Ottawa at, as the English secretary for the Papal Nuncio to Canada. And so uh, I'm grateful uh, to His Grace uh, for sending uh, to our parish an associate. And I can tell you, I can use one, <laughs> as you probably know. Ever since Father David retired, as you know, Father David comes, helps on weekends, but uh, certainly we can, um, we're very grateful to have a priest uh, assigned to us uh, full time as an associate. And so I spoke with him yesterday uh, from Ottawa, and he's really thrilled about coming here. And uh, he told me, he said, by the way, he said, I spy on you. You know what that means. He listens, he tunes into our live stream masses. <laughs> so he gets a sense of our community, and he's looking forward to coming here. So please pray for Andrew Taylor. Um, Father Dave, uh, is offering a five-part series on the resurrection of Jesus, as you know. Uh, and the series begins uh, tomorrow, Monday, and meeting on Zoom from 9.45 to 11. So that series starts tomorrow, and details are in the bulletin. On behalf of the Catholic Women's League, I invite you, all the women of the community, to a general meeting this Tuesday. There will be a prayer service in the church at 7 p.m., followed by a meeting in the hall, and please see the bulletin for more details. And our thanks to all of you for bringing food, um, non-perishable food items for the North York Food Bank. It's, they're, they're very grateful for all your assistance. And to those who offer casseroles for Good Shepherd Ministry, I notice that they're at the back. If you'd like to join either uh, the casseroles, uh, to, to make casseroles, feel free to speak to, I believe it's Margaret Hawkins, who's back there today. And finally, I just want to, I, I mentioned last week that this weekend we'll have um, uh, special uh, gifts, handicraft items from the Holy Land, and I invite Paul, who represents them, uh, the, or the, the group, to come forward and just say a few words about that, and you're all invited to come into the hall, and I certainly encourage you to do so. Thank you, Monsignor. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here with you today, not only to celebrate Mass amongst you, but please allow me a few minutes to share with you an important message, something that unfortunately we do not hear enough people talk about. 
I represent an organization called Holy Land Christians, and for the last 10 years, our mission has been to help support and to strengthen the presence of Christian families living in the Holy Land. When we hear about what is happening over there today, we mostly hear about the conflict between the Jewish and the Muslim community. Unfortunately, we do not hear enough about what is happening to our Christian brothers and sisters. They are caught in the middle of this conflict and they are being pushed out of their homes every day. If we go back 50 years, Christians accounted for 30% of the population in the Holy Land. Today, that number is down to a staggering 1.2%. It is unacceptable that at the birthplace of our faith to only have 1.2% Christians in it. It's also scary to imagine that maybe in 20, 25 years, there will not be any Christians left in the Holy Land. There's two reasons why this is happening. One is, like I said, the conflict and the daily persecution that they receive, but also the lack of income, an income that for many years these families would get by selling to visitors and tourists religious artifacts that they make by hand. Unfortunately, less and less people are visiting the Holy Land every year, especially in the last four years due to COVID, and of course, especially now due to the war. So their income has drastically dropped. 80% of the Christians who live in the Holy Land would rely on tourism and the olive wood trade. But like I said, due to the harsh living conditions, many of them are forced to flee their homes in search of income and safety. Our organization for the last 10 years, what we've been doing is we've been offering much needed support to more than 50 persecuted Christian families who live in Bethlehem. And with your help, we'll continue to do so, hopefully for many years to come. What we do is we bring the items that they make by hand and we present them here to you. In the Parish Hall, as you exit straight ahead, I've set up a beautiful display with just some of these items, all made by hand by families who live in the Holy Land today. Items like this beautiful crucifix, which is made out of olive wood, and it comes with four special relics, soil, stone, olive leaves from Jerusalem, and holy incense from Bethlehem. And this you can hang it or stand it or any counter. There's other beautiful items, rosaries, bracelets, gold items, wall hangings made from wood or silver, like this beautiful holy family carved and painted by hand, very unique statues and nativity scenes, and the, their most popular item is the holy kit, which comes with soil from Jerusalem, water from the Jordan River, holy oil, and holy incense. With this, you can bless your home or bless the sick. Most of us might not have the chance to visit the Holy Land, but every Christian family should have a piece of the Holy Land in its home. So today we give you a chance to own a beautiful piece, but also at the same time to offer some much needed assistance to our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land. So please come have a look. We accept debit card, credit card, or cash, and every purchase you make today, you'll be directly assisting to keep a Christian family in the Holy Land just a little bit longer. So please come have a look. I'll be there to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, everyone. I would like to, find, uh, to thank Monsignor Pat for allowing us to be here with you today and to share with you our mission and our message. Monsignor, thank you for having us. Your support and your prayers are greatly appreciated. And on behalf of the families that we represent, they always insist that we leave a piece of their work in your parish. So I will be leaving, before we leave tomorrow, I'll be leaving this beautiful crucifix as a small gift for your support. So this way you'll have a piece of their work in your parish forever. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. God bless you, and have a good night. Um, I forgot to mention that today, amongst many baptisms, we had someone received fully into the church who was unable to do it at the Easter Vigil. He's part of the, the group that 16 that were baptized. Mar Martin, would you please stand? So he was, had to be away, but now he's back. And so today we received him fully into the church and he made his first communion also. So congratulations to Martin. <laughs> And so just after the Mass, uh, I'll be uh, in the hall to greet people and also bless some items uh, if you'd like to see me. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now we pray three Hail Marys. Thank you. My name is Michael, a member of the Knights of Columbus, and it's my honor this evening to lead in three Hail Marys for those that may die in this coming week, that God will welcome their souls, and for their families, that God will provide comfort and strengthen them in their faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn found on page 375 at the Lamb's High Feast we sing. Page 375. Souls reborn, all 